In today's video, Kevin, who is one of our finishing carpenters, is going to share three finishing details used on our latest retrofit. Before we get into the video, I want to thank those who have recently given us a super thanks. Studad40 and Robert Baudet, you rock. Thank you so much for your support. If you've received value from any of our videos over the years and you're wondering how you can show your support, I highly encourage you to try out the super thanks option accessed through the thanks button that you see below this video. These videos take a ton of time and resources for the team and I to create and showing your support with a super thanks will give us the ability to make these videos even better. Thank you for your support and enjoy today's video. One of our other lead carpenters designed it and in talking with the client, we kind of went back and forth. The client had a couple of source images that she would like to, to emulate. I then came up with just a, a pretty rough pencil sketch and um, she agreed on, on the sketch and we built it. Most of everything you see here in the dark kind of gray is made out of an exterior grade MDF, Xtira. And we wanted that here in, in the front entrance rather than just go with MDF because uh, regular MDF, if any water touches it, it usually swells and has a problem. So this stuff here in a mudroom that we're in um, works much better. It'll last a lot longer. We went with a solid walnut butcher block style countertop that we special ordered and we cut and seamed and scribed to the walls here on site. We also went with this panel on the very top. The client wanted that so that they didn't have to reach up there or get up there to have to clean any dust. So because this exterior product is quite heavy, um, you can imagine there's quite a bit of weight up here. So to hold this, these cubbies, these upper cubbies up, um, I opted to have these sit actually on top of this panel. They're all also obviously fastened in through the end. And we also put some framing material up above here in the valance. And that way, that top valance triangular shaped piece is actually holding the front of this cabinet up. So it's not just like a decorative piece to, to, hide, to hide a gap, it's actually helping hold this, this front edge um, up. So it's probably hard to tell, but this existing ceiling is quite wavy. Um, so it was an extra challenge to get this kind of triangular shaped piece up here and fitted tight to the ceiling. So we cut it over size, put it in place, then scribe it to the ceiling, then cut out that scribe line. And now that it's you know installed and painted, you can you can hardly tell. It, it definitely disguises the fact that the ceiling is is all over the place. So all of the butcher block countertops in this house, we finished. Um, we sanded it down from 80 grit through to down to 320, so it's really really smooth. And then we applied a single coat of Audi's oil, uh, and it really really brings out the the grain and the color of the walnut. This step here in the front entrance. There's a pretty ugly old concrete step underneath. So I wanted to hide that and also not make it so high of a step that it's, you know, to come into the main living space. Uh, that's difficult to, to walk up. We used solid oak nosings on the, the, the two front steps here. This actually involved quite a bit of math because the, the main house level floor isn't exactly perfectly parallel to the lower level. This, this whole lower level here was at one point uh, the garage of the house, um, I think many moons ago. So to get a, a pretty consistent rise over these two steps involved a lot of math, a lot of tweaking to make it as comfortable to walk as possible. So to mirror the walnut butcher block countertops that we put in throughout this project, we went with solid walnut jams and casing on this doorway opening. Because there's no caulking at all, all the joints got to fit perfectly. So like this, every single piece is scribed to the wall. So the wall is never perfect. It's never perfectly straight, square or 90. Um, so every single piece was, was custom cut in place. And even the, the miter joint took a lot of tweaking um, and adjusting even with a block plane. Uh, now it fits amazingly. 
Uh, we're really, really proud of how this turned out. If you want to see another video about this project, you can check it out here. Please drop us a comment and like below if you've received value from this video or any other of our videos over the years. And I would be super grateful if you tried out the super thanks option accessed through the thanks button below this video. For the contractors out there, I recommend you head to ConsciousBuilderAcademy.com. Our next course on how to build a purpose-driven team will be coming out very soon, but we already have a ton of great courses and resources available just for you, including our most sold course, how to market and sell passive houses and other high performance homes. Thanks again, I'm Casey Gray, and remember to live consciously.